Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. Today I'm going to show you a quick demo of this um, V40 motherboard that I've created. If you've seen my other videos, or you can check them out, I have a V40 motherboard that's built on an ISA card. The uh, layout of the components on this are identical, like not the physical location, but the wiring is identical. Um, so the same ROM will work here as in the uh, other one. But what I wanted to do was, now that I've got it coming along, I wanted to get it on an actual motherboard. And this is designed to sit in a uh, ATX case. Um, I was going to go with like a full seven slots, but this the board just got bigger and bigger in total size. So I stuck with four slots. I mean, you could honestly probably reduce down to two, but that would only leave you with your video card and one other add-on ISA card. So I think four is a good number to go with for now. So I'm going to talk about the components. It's going to repeat. If you've seen my other videos, I've already talked about these components, but I want to talk about them now so that this is the first time you're checking out the video or any of my videos. So we've got our V40 processor here. Uh, you can look this up on Wikipedia or just Google. It's a uh, made by NEC. They've got a there's a V20 and what this this has a V20 in the core of it. It's what it's built around. But they've included the interrupt controller which is compatible with the 8259 and a system timer which is compatible with the 825354 uh, slash 54. That's there's a serial port. Uh, I haven't played with that much at all. It's not uh, something I've really messed with or have a need for right now. And then the uh, there's a DMA controller that's built into the processor. So it's not compatible with the 8237 DMA controller. The 8237 was a 16-bit uh, controller, and then they used an index register. I want to say they used a, like an LS760 as an index register to, and then that would make out for the full 20 bit address bus where this one, it's DMA controller will address the full 20 bit address bus by itself without that index register. Now with the way this is built, I could actually add that 8237 DMA controller later along with the index register at the proper memory address, just to be that much more compatible. But, uh, at this time, I'm not even using the DMA, so uh, I, I don't see a need to really keep expanding on that. I can make a whole video about that, so I'll just move on. Got our keyboard controller here, and this is connected to port 60. And on my board, you can see, if it'll focus, I've put the port number next to each chip, as well as the chip number. Just makes it easier when you're putting it together, or and when you're writing code. On my ISA card, you, you know I had a header for this. And I just went ahead and moved it to the board here. Um, down here we've got our ROM, and that is at address F8000. Then we have some RAM, and this is at address F0000. And we have some other RAM. This is your main RAM here. It's 512K, and it starts at address 0. I use this RAM with the uh, ROM. It's just a uh, upper RAM. And then you've got that space in between that your uh, ISA cards can use. And you could always add, if you wanted to go up 64K, we could make an ISA card that plugs into close up, what is that, a 128 or so to close up that, to bring it up to 64. But 512 is fine for what I'm doing here. Got our decoders over here. Uh, so uh, I don't know off the top of my head, I can't, but I think these two are for like the... I think this, these ones do I.O. and then these, these two here is like the memory and then some other decoding here. There's some decoding for the uh, speaker as well. That's why the speaker is close to this. Over here, well, let's go up here. Here's my latches. So there's 0 through 7 and then, let's see, 16 through 19 are latched. Uh, 8 through 15 are not latched. And you can do that on the V20 as well as the 8088. If this was a 8086, obviously you'd have to have 16-bit slots. It'd be a whole lot bigger process, but you'd have to latch those those other lines. And I've talked about this in my other video. You don't have to latch your, your middle 
address lines. They just stay held during the whole bus cycle. Up here we've got our transceiver for the bus. The uh, it's a LS two uh, four five, and it uh, goes between the uh, processor and the the data bus. Over here we've got um, some crystals. You can see this board has three crystals. This one here is for the keyboard, and this one's for the processor, and then this last one over here is actually. Uh, 14.31818 and that's the crystal they used in the original PC and I use that for the system timer to get the appropriate timer frequency. You can use, so the V40 can use either the V40's crystal or an external clock for the uh, system timer and I wanted to have that actual frequency for the for the, uh, it keeps the speaker pitch correctly, and then it also, with the um, timer ticks, it keeps them correctly as well. Um, so, like, you could take this, this 8284 clock here is only here for that. The V40 has a built-in clock as well. So, it's only, like I said, it's only for the timer. Down here, we've got just a regular hex inverter i use that for various things and then down here i've got my port 61 and this is for enabling the speaker and then enabling the non-mask will interrupt as well as the channel check now over here i've added this is port e0 and this is for my hard drive which just like my other cards uses a USB host controller, the CH-376 uh, is what I'm using. And uh, so I've just added the header there. Now one difference is my original board, the one that's built on the SA card, does not have the this buffer here that I've added. And it works fine with the buffer, and it worked fine without, except for the length of my cable here. I had a cable that was like a foot long, and it was created like a, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't work when you went to boot it up, and I shortened the cable and it fixed all the problems. So I was thinking to add this to help kind of, kind of like an amplifier in a sense from the system bus to this so that we could use longer cables. I haven't tested a longer cable on this board yet, but it works just fine. I've got some pull-up resistors, pull-down resistors for various uh, lines on the system, like your uh, DMA request lines. They all have to be, uh, I can't remember, I think that's pulled up on all of those. And then we've got our just a power LED reset button. And I ran this over to a pin header so you could do an external reset as well as an external LED. And then the last chip I haven't talked about is this hex buffer and it's just used with the keyboard. So, and then the keyboard uses these two, these just for eliminate line, these resistors eliminate noise on the line. Got our keyboard. It's a PS2 type keyboard. I went with that one because they're available. The old keyboard, um, you just can't find those anymore. Even though the old keyboard was what would have been used with an 8088. Then we got our, uh, where we plug our power in here and that's that's the board pretty much and four slots so let me uh, pause for a second I'm gonna put this in the case and we'll show a quick demo all right here it is in the case uh, hopefully there's not too many shadows while I'm trying to cord this but as you can see it fits in this I uh, ATX case uh, I've checked all the slots are lined up correctly the keyboard just having to be convenient on this uh, faceplate here. Lined up the keyboard there. As you can see, I'm off a little bit, so I'll slide that over a little on the next board. But, right, I mean, it plugs in just fine now. I just want it more centered. We've got the, it's an ATX power supply. Then I just got an adapter here. So the uh, minus 5 volt. Uh, is not used on 
I think maybe some of the old ones it was, but on modern ones, they do not use the minus five volts. So it's just a dead line on the board, but it is connected. So if you use, uh, if you do have it available, it'll work, but I don't think it works on this one. So on this adapter, now oh, it's behind everything here, but it's got the two wires. All you have to do is connect those two wires together and it turns on. And I just, here in the floppy drive, I put my switch. I might cut a little slot later, but for now I've got that. Now obviously I could put an ATX slot on there and then do the use the circuitry to actually use the little push button. It's a like a momentary switch, and so they take some circuitry. It's a, I think there's like five 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 timers, some resistors, capacitors, to get that to work correctly. I haven't really wanted to venture into that yet. This works just fine for now, but one day I may go to that. I got space on the board. I've got my USB here. Now, I thought, geez, it'd be nice to have this on the outside. But you know, on these old computers, when you you never did just remove the hard drive anyway, and that's what this is serving the purpose of. So there, there's that on the inside. Maybe one day we'll make a different change with that. Um, one issue I had was my speaker. As you can see, I there's a piece of paper behind that because there's a mount right behind the speaker pins, and it shorted it out. So I had to put an insulator in there so that it didn't short. And what I've done is I've already, on my design, I've moved the speaker over here. And that, and that gets it out of the way of the cards anyway. So that's, the, that's it in the case. We'll just boot it up here. There's no screen. I've got, um, I've actually put together an ISA card. Let me see if I can grab it here. I'm going to pause. So what, what I've got is I've, put together this ISA card. It's got everything that was on my breadboard, if you've seen in the other videos, to connect the screen right on and it would connect up there. I'm just missing a few pieces to finish the assembly on this. I'll make a video once I get it assembled. But we can still test it, so I'm going to turn it on. So here's the speaker beep. And that's all, all I do in the code is it um, just turns on a like a tone and then it just cuts it off. And that just... So our hard drive is booting up. It's loading into memory. What this is going to do is boot DOS. You hear Alley Cat was loaded. And you hear the theme song to Alley Cat. So there you go. That's the... Uh, Latest and greatest project, like I say, I'm going to move the speaker, adjust this over a little bit. I think that's a, a pretty decent board. Uh, one note that I guess I haven't hit yet, I did add the decoupling capacitors that have been recommended quite a few times on YouTube that I add these. Um, one suggestion that I had heard was, if you've seen my other videos, I've got a V40 that's a 40, or sorry, it's 20 megahertz, so you use a 40 megahertz crystal. And it just kept crashing on me, and it occurred to me that maybe these decoupling capacitors would make that uh, higher speed processor work. So I haven't tested it yet. If I can get it work great, I'll make a video and put a demo out on that. So anyway, thanks for checking this out today.